Happy Wednesday, everybody. Welcome back to Reality Water Cooler. I am Sarah in Texas, and this is our place to chat all the latest reality TV gossip. And of course, our beloved Jeff Lewis. I do not know why I keep saying beloved, but whatever. If you are new, welcome, welcome, welcome. We love hearing what you have to think. Get comfortable in comments. Make sure to like, make sure to hit uh, the subscribe button, all the things. So I would really appreciate it. Shout out everybody. I hope you're having an amazing day. It is yet another rainy, dreary day here in Texas. So and my dog is barking for some reason, and she doesn't normally bark on Wednesdays because there's no one. There's the pool guy's not here, the trash guy's not here, the recycle guy's not here, the lawn guys aren't here. So I don't know why Luna's barking. But anyways, if you saw my Instagram story, shout out Melanie. If you saw my Instagram story, you would see that um that uh oh I'm trying to put up all this fancy stuff and I don't know how to do it. There we go. Um Luna went to the vet yesterday. My husband took her back for her checkup for some skin thing that she had. She was like scratching herself or biting and she's out of the cone of shame. So I'm so happy about that. And so is she. Now I can like rub her little ears and scratch them all the time. So I love that. Okay, let's get started with shout out news today. We're going to talk a little bit about Kim and Croy again, because, you know, TMZ police cam video. I'm here for it all. Uh, Andy Cohen. He's having a rough go of it. Okay, let's talk real quick about uh, Andy Cohen, uh, Kim and Croy. Sorry. So yesterday, um, you know, I talked yesterday about these two different reports of her house being for sale, and it was a little bit different price, all around the three million mark, but it was a different number for bedrooms and a different number for bathrooms. So somebody, thank you, uh, Jeff Lewis Sluis sent me a message and basically said how it can work sometimes is that they have a couple of half baths, which is obviously just a toilet and a sink. They can count those as a bath. So they don't necessarily have to distinguish a full bath versus half bath. So I guess that's why it went from like six baths to nine bathrooms. And then also the bedrooms went from like five to seven. So I don't really understand that. But I guess if you have I think a door and a closet, you can consider it a bedroom. So I guess that's what they're doing. But it doesn't matter because now we're told, I don't even know, it's not even really for sale. I guess it was fake and somebody had put up some fake website and made it look real like it was for sale by owner and it's actually not. So I guess the court, um, the judge is involved in this situation, very hands-on, which is so bizarre to me. I have not been through a divorce, so I don't know how this all works. But, you know, we saw like a week or so ago, the judge was even telling her where to sleep. He was telling her certain things. So I thought that was super weird. But I guess the judge is supposed to sign off if they can even put this house up for sale or not. And I don't think they have done that. And Corey is not happy about it. So today we got the TMZ notification. Uh, it's in the Jeff Lewis Obsessed Facebook group. If not, go check out your TMZ app. Um, more police cam video. So I don't even know when this was from. Did anyone catch a date? If you did, put it in comments and let me know. Oh, thank you so much for liking my talk. You know, I don't even know where this is from. Probably Marshall's TJ Maxx. Um, but, you know, she recently said whenever he filed for divorce for the second time, she right before she went away, or maybe she was already away at the Surreal Life in Columbia for MTV, I'm forgetting now. But she basically said, oh, he needs to take that divorce away. We are still sleeping in the be same bed. We are still having sex. We are still like a regular married couple. So I don't know when this police cam video is from, but you see yet again the tension. She apparently um, is trying to get some personal things out of the, the bedroom and Croy has locked himself in the bedroom. The police are basically saying, look, you've got to show me your hands or come out. Do something, first of all, to let me know that you're safe. Everything is okay. Because, you know, in domestic uh, dispute calls, that is like the scariest, most dangerous thing for a police officer to get involved in. Because emotions are high. Tensions are high. Sadly, that's where a lot of violence can happen. Sometimes the police uh, intentionally or accidentally get involved in that. So uh, anyways, they wanted to make sure that Croy was OK and he wasn't going to hurt the officers. Right. So he's kind of being an ass jack about it. But also who called the police? 
Like she apparently wanted some like eye cream. She wanted a blanket. She wanted her comforter. And he wasn't giving her these things because he basically didn't trust that she was going to leave the room once he said. So basically they're fighting over, you know, where they're going to sleep. But if you watch the whole four minute video, like I did, sadly, you see her say in there, I've been sleeping in my daughter's bed for the past three months. Okay, so which is it, Kim? Are y'all sleeping and having sex like a regular married couple? Or are you sleeping in your daughter's bed for three months? Like, I really can't tell which it is, right? Yeah. So somebody says that Kim called. So in none of these have I really seen like screaming and stuff. But I also, especially after the first time, you realize, first of all, the police do have these body cams on them and they are releasing them. So I kind of wonder what the the rule is on it. Does a judge have to agree that the body cam footage can be released? Does everyone like if I have the police called on me, they're not going to put that out because it's of no interest to anyone. Right. But Kim Zolciak and Croy Bierman, they're like, oh, we're going to put this crap out. So I don't know. I wonder if the police, the Atlanta police. Oh, OK. Michelle's husband is a police officer because I've met her. Shout out. Depends on the state. But also, wouldn't it depend if they're famous or not? Because like normies aren't going to have their body cam footage put out. But we have seen body cam footage put out of like, um, oh, what's that blonde? Oh, my God. The actress that was like, um, don't you know who I am? And she was drunk. Uh, she was married to Ryan Phillippe. My brain is going blank on her name. But anyways, Countess Luann, I think her body cam footage was put out. So we've seen some of them, right? I'm here for it. But anyways, I just thought it was interesting that she's basically saying, you know, oh, we're just like a normal married couple. And then they're saying, uh, I've been sleeping in my daughter's bed for three months. So that's not normal. Uh, anyways, that's all on that. Let's get into Andy Cohen and his rough few days. Okay, for a while, I guess. So we know that with uh, Bethany Frankel's reality reckoning, she's really kind of coming at Andy Cohen. And last time she wasn't always saying his name, but here lately she, with the Nene leaks, she's definitely talking about Andy Cohen. She's definitely talking about Bravo, all the things, right? But today, so today, or maybe last night, a page six article comes out again, involving Bethany and now Andy Cohen again. So back in December of 2022, don't forget I got an amazing opportunity, shout out Colory Net, to go and sit in the Watch What Happens Live audience that had Bethany Frankel and Jeff Lewis as the guest. Oh my God, I was dying. I posted so many pictures, so many videos. So when I was watching, the audience is very small, okay? Shane was in front of me, Megan was in front of me, and Doug was in front of me, okay? Uh, but you get to see when they come in, you get to see them talk before the show. You get to see them talk during the commercials. So everything was going on as normal. And so this was not a live show. It recorded on a Monday. It aired on a Wednesday. So I got permission from the producer and I was asking her, you know, what can I post? What can I not post? So I posted all the things that I was able to. Some stuff I had to wait until Wednesday after the show aired live. But some of the things I was posting normally was, Bryn coming out to sit on Bethany's lap during one of the commercial breaks right next to Jeff Lewis. Okay, everything seemed fine because as we're watching it, yes, when the show started, Andy Cohen asked her about her at that time new podcast called Rewives and basically, you know, teased her saying, uh, why are you doing a podcast about housewives when you always acted like you were above this and didn't want to talk about the housewives? Jeff Lewis also kind of teased her and said, so tell me what's different about this podcast. Like everyone does a podcast, uh, a recap of the housewives. So tell me why yours is different. So at the time, it just seemed like they were being normal. She didn't seem upset by it. The commercial breaks, they're not upset. They're chatting with each other. Like I said, so then we see the next day or two days later, Bethany comes out and basically says, I felt like they were super rude to me. My daughter, Bryn, also felt they were rude to me. My staff, people were telling me. So as it was happening, nothing felt off. I mean, the stories that I was posting was nothing unusual, no tension, nothing. It just seemed for attention almost, right? So then Jeff, of course, and his super manners that he has 
Um, he comes on and apologizes. Apparently he called her. Then Bethany makes a TikTok saying Jeff Lewis is a real charmer. He called me. We talked it out. Uh, we understand. But now with this page six article that came out yesterday, she is now, Bethany Frankel is now saying again, she felt bombarded. She felt uh, not bombarded. What's the word? She ambushed. She feels ambushed mostly by Andy Cohen. So she says a little bit by Jeff Lewis, but she kind of plays that off as like Jeff Lewis is still kind of in the realm of Andy Cohen. You know, he's not really on Bravo, but he still has a reality show. He has a, a Jeff Lewis show on Radio Andy. He's friends with Andy Cohen. So he she mostly blames Andy Cohen, though, basically saying she felt ambushed, that he she didn't realize that he had kind of negative feelings about her podcast. And she, he used it as a gotcha moment whenever she came on Watch What Happens Live. So tell me your thoughts about it all. I don't know what to think. She gets enough publicity. I don't understand why she needs her name in the tabloids or the page six or the Daily Mail or the TMZ all the time. She's doing incredibly well. She's got money coming out of her ears. Like, I just don't understand it. So you know he's hearing all of that, even though he probably doesn't give much credit to it. You know he hears all that. So then today, on today's Andy Cohen Live, he has not one but two callers totally come after him and shame him. So it starts off as a light conversation, him and John Hill, who will be on Jeff Lewis Live tomorrow, and will also be on Doug's Cooking Kibbits uh, with Megan. They're having this lighthearted conversation about tipping and how he tips on his Apple Pay a dollar each time for his tea that he gets at Starbucks. I think that's perfectly acceptable. He thinks it's perfectly acceptable. If you know Andy Cohen, you know that he talks a lot about tipping. He's kind of obsessed. I remember one Christmas he was talking about how much you tip your doorman, how much you tip the lawn guys, how much you tip your house cleaner. You know, he want, everyone wants to make sure, especially if you're famous, you don't want people blabbing like, oh my God, that guy's a cheap person. They don't tip me anything. You want to make sure you're tipping within normal range. But we do know tipping has kind of gotten out of control lately, right? I mean, it's like, it's insane. Everything you do, somebody scoops a, a thing of ice cream and they want money for it, extra money for it. And you're like, oh my God, like I can't tip everybody all the dang time. Anyway, so this lady calls in and says, uh, Andy, I think you need to be tipping 25% on your tea. And they're like, okay, that's like 50 cents a quarter more. What's the big deal? So anyway, she goes into him and basically talks. I guess Starbucks is going through a, a strike or a union fight right now to get more money. Another Starbucks employee, longtime employee calls in and says, Andy, that dollar that you're tipping on the one cup of Starbucks tea is perfectly acceptable and very appreciated because our Starbucks employees, they're actually called something else of, uh, staff, whatever they call it, something else. Uh, they get very good uh, wages and they also get very good benefits. So he feels good about that, right? Then he starts telling us about Ben. I mean, don't we love the Ben stories? I love hearing about Ben. I love hearing about Lucy. I love hearing about his daddy life, right? So he starts telling us, so last night we know that um, uh, his good friend, John Mayer, was having a concert. So he had already told us that, or he told us today that Ben was so excited. This was last night was going to be his very first concert ever. And it was going to be uh, John Mayer. They had special lanyard made for him, like your VIP, all this kind of really sweet stuff. And then Ben, two days ago, gets a call, he gets a call from his daycare, uh, or I guess they call it, whatever they call it, camp, daycare, preschool, whatever they call it. Nursery school is what Andy Cohen calls it, actually, which I think is even cuter. Gets a call from the nursery school and he's got a light fever. So less than 100. He thinks, oh, everything's fine. Go to sleep. It'll be fine. Maybe it's not even real. You know, when they take those, you know, temperatures, maybe it wasn't even accurate. But Ben wakes up in the middle of the night, like four in the morning, comes into his bed. He's like, oh, daddy, I don't feel good at all. He actually had a worse fever, right? So he does know he's sick and he does keep him home from the concert but he still went. Oh my God. Some caller, shout out if you're here. Some caller 
calls in and reams him. I mean, she's like, if my son had a fever, I would never leave my child. You made the decision to just leave him and go out to this concert and have fun, knowing that your son was sick at home and suffering with a fever. The way Andy said his jaw was just open. He was dying. Like, tell me what you think. Is he wrong? Is the caller wrong? Like, I don't know. Most of my time as a mom, I've not worked. So I've had the option to stay home with my kids, to, to not go to work, things like that, because I was a full-time mom with them. But for the five years that I was an elementary school te teacher, uh, even my husband would have to leave his job, obviously, to come get a sick kid or, you know, if something was wrong. My mom would have to do that. We know Andy is a single dad, but he has nanny set up, you know, all that kind of stuff. So all y'all are, so I'm, I'm curious what y'all are saying in the comments. Wreath Wither Witherspoon was a lady I was talking about earlier. Yes. Thank you so much. Um, yes. Bet ben wasn't deathly ill. It was okay that he went. So Andy, who tells us everything about Ben, I don't know if Ben's going to regret this or hate this when he gets older, but he even tells us that he had set him up with a movie. He planned the movie to end at 8.15. He said Ben had no interest in him. Like Ben did not feel good at all. He wanted to watch the movie and go to bed. Everything was fine. It wasn't like Ben, who's now about four and a half, was like making him feel guilty for this. He was just dying though. N.W. Shelley, this is where people lose compassion for single parents. And I don't even know if it had anything to do with a single parent, because I felt like even if he had a partner at home, a caller might have called in and said, oh, you shouldn't have went. You should have stayed home with your kid. I mean, I don't know. We get so much guilt as moms and dads. I just felt like this caller really went in hard on him. I think he was just flabbergasted, flabbergasted. Oh, Michael Riley makes a good point. What if the fever had escalated? That would be my concern. But I think whoever his caretaker was, the nurse, the nanny, whoever it was, would have called him and said, hey, it's gotten worse. And I'm pretty sure Andy would have come home, right? Um, or said, you know, do you want me to give him more medicine? What time did he get the medicine last time? Yeah. So I don't know. It was interesting. I just felt like, um, and then Andy said he's got tickets to go to tonight. And he goes, you know what? I'm going to that concert too. So he just doubled down just like, uh, you know, Jeff Lewis did. And we will definitely talk about the Amanda McCant situation because Jeff definitely addressed it on today's after show. Um, okay. I do want to see your comments though. Patriot says, I think it's fine. If it's just a cold, he's fine. But a severe infection, I would stay home. So we know he and John Mayer are really good friends. John Mayer was just on Watch What Happens Live the night before. He's seen him in concert a million times. It's not like this once in a lifetime thing. That's probably my only hesitation with it. But I do feel like even he says later that Ben made up a story and said that he threw up at school and then he asked the teachers and the teacher said he didn't. So I think with a four and a half year old kid, it's also that fine line of like, how much honesty is there going? Like, how sick are you? You know what I mean? Do you just want to get in bed with dad? But the fact that he wasn't like begging him to stay home, I think that would have been hard for me to hear as a listener. But also, he's not my kid. I don't get to make the decisions for Andy Cohen and his kid if he stays home or goes out to this concert, right? Dolly Girl says, this isn't the 1900s. We all have cell phones. He can go home if he's needed. Good point. Good point. I do want to hear from you. Hear what your thoughts are. Um, if you're the caller, I'm just dying. I would really know. It was funny, though, because the caller, it was her first time to ever call in. And she was like, oh, my God, I'm so excited to talk to you. And he's like, yeah, that was a good call. <laughs> oh, my God. It was hilarious. And then he tried to ask John Hill kind of like what he thought of it afterwards. And John Hill was like, didn't really defend Andy, which I kind of thought he would. I feel like sometimes when, uh, when John is quiet or doesn't say his opinion to Andy, he's kind of agreeing or not agreeing with Andy. And he just doesn't want to say it on the air. Tell me what you think. 
It was super interesting. I just felt like Andy was getting shamed left and right today. Everything that's going on with the Bethany Frankel reality reckoning, the latest article that came out on the page six, I was just like, can we just give Andy a hug? Like, I think he just needs a hug today. He's got to be feeling extreme dad guilt. All I know is I really hope Ben feels much better and he's back at school soon because the dad guilt, he doesn't need any more of it, right? I'm just dying. I'm trying to see your comments on a all moms, not be. I have six kids. Katrina says someone is always sick, mad or sad. I'd never go out with a hubby or girlfriend night though. Oh yeah. Six kids. Somebody probably is. Uh, WJ King says, John sounds like a great co-host. I think he's fantastic. I love him. Um, oh, what's happening? Is Patriot saying my video? The video's blurry. That's weird. Um, what are you watching it on? YouTube? That is weird. Um, do you think what a, oh, Bobby, good point. Do you think Jeff Lewis would have gone to the concert if Monroe was sick? That's a little trickier because he only, you know, he's sharing custody with Gage. So he only gets her about 55 or so percent of the time. So that gets a little bit trickier to me because he doesn't have him all the time. Andy Cohen and Jeff both to me are really good parents, uh, but they both also work a lot. They do a lot of things. Sorry. They do a lot of things where they have to um, entertain or actually work at night. Right. So that's the times when you put your kids to bed and things like that. So I don't know. Oh, y'all are talking about when Gage took her to the tower bar and she threw up in the corner. Oh, my gosh. But I do think there's a part where you don't know a kid is sick. They could feel bad and just be being quiet. And then all of a sudden they throw up or, or do something. Right. So I don't know. Um, OK, I'm clear. Everyone says good. Good, good, good. It was just somebody's Instagram or somebody's YouTube. Uh, OK, let's get into today's Jeff Lewis. Today was Jackie Schimmel and Doug Buden. I love Doug Buden. I really think he can just have a conversation with everyone. I think he can chime in on pretty much any conversation ever. The thing that J that Doug Buden is known for is he knows a little about a lot of things. So even though he doesn't have a kid, he still brought up uh, Jackie Schimmel and her baby boy who is named Clyde. He's four years old. So the first thing they start talking about, and this is the reason I chose an orange shirt tonight, is because they were talking about fall decorations and she was totally making fun of people. And then she kept saying, she was joking about the, it's fall y'all, it's fall y'all. And I was like, is Jackie Schimmel outside my house in Texas? Because does she know that I have this wooden painted sign in front of a tree that says, happy fall y'all. So I posted a picture and put it on Instagram. And I said, I feel personally attacked by Jackie Schimmel. So. Anyways, um, but Jeff is even in the fall spirit. He said that Toby and Milo are trying to eat all the pumpkins that they just went and bought. Did he say he got them from a, he said the store. I forgot which store though, um, but he went and bought them. Um, yes, Michael Riley sent me pictures. He says, you know, I love my Halloween. Oh my God, y'all. Y'all send me the best DMs and the best pictures. Um, but he sent me a picture of his, um, in front of his fireplace. And it was something else, some other part of his house. It's beautiful decor. Yes. Trader Joe's. That's what it was. Um, but Patriot says, I just bought all my pumpkins that says it's fall y'all from Target. I love that. I mean, you know, uh, nobody's business. Somebody says, okay. So Jackie posts a lot of videos and pictures of her son, Clyde, and she said that even it's grossing her out. I d she's even embarrassed by how much she's doing it. I did love, and I sort of want to go, has anyone seen this video? I don't follow Gretchen Rossi. Remember her from OC? I think she's beautiful, but she does post a lot of videos on like home decor, getting ready, cooking, her kid. She's like the young, amazing version of Martha Stewart. But I had to quit following her because she made me feel like crap. I'm like, oh my God, I do not have the time 
or money or desire to do all of this amazing stuff. So I do kind of want to see this video where she was posting about all of her fall stuff and whatever. But Jackie was like, I mean, totally making fun of her, which I thought was funny. Um, oh my God, I love that. Maria says, I have a wooden sign that says happy fall y'all. And I'm in Southern California. So I love that. And you know what? I was just in California and people say y'all there too. I hear y'all and then you all, and then somebody, who is it that says you guys? I know that's like somebody, somebody recently, maybe on Jeff Lewis says you guys, I can't think of who it is. Lady Grace, she is still with Slade. She is still with Slade. They didn't get married yet, but they, she is still with Slade. Okay. Jeff Lewis, what do you think about him? He is so like old school, y'all. So he's talking about Monroe and a spider and how she didn't want to go near him because there was a spider near him. And he was like, basically, if he had a son, he was saying he'd be disappointed if that son was afraid of spiders. But yet it's OK that Monroe, who's a girl, is af afraid of spiders. I mean, Doug was kind of like, no, it's not really a male female thing. And Jeff was like, yeah, it really is. Like he wasn't going to back down. He was like, no, I'd be embarrassed if my, if I had a son and he was embarrassed, if he was afraid of spiders, but I'm okay that Monroe is a girl and she's afraid of spiders. I'm like, oh my God, Jeff, like seriously, seriously, seriously. Oh, Bobby says, New York says you guys. Yeah, I definitely hear New Yorkers say that you guys. Um, oh, shout out Robin. Um, so then Jackie talk. So Jeff brings up shadow banning. So if you don't know what shadow banning means, I've had it happen to me a few times. You don't really get notified by social media, but basically this is something that, um, Bethany Frankel talked about months ago. She basically felt like she was shadow banned for some reason on TikTok. What it means is like if you're someone like Bethany Frankel and you have millions of followers, if you post a video within seconds, you probably have 10,000 views or more. If you get shadow banned, they're basically doing something with the algorithm that pushes your video down. It basically doesn't let it get seen in the algorithm by as many people. So what happened with Bethany is she noticed or her people noticed her team Notice, oh, my videos only have like a thousand videos of uh, views all of a sudden. So that's when you know you're shadow banned. So Jeff said it's happened to him a few times. Basically, he gets in trouble by the videos that Kian makes every once in a while. If it's like weird content, I have gotten in trouble for the simplest things on Instagram. It's really insane. So I have to be super careful with what I do and say. Uh, but Kat, but Jackie. And I saw this Instagram story and she made a story of it recently. She posted that she wanted to drop kick her son. Yeah, the four month old Clyde. I don't think Instagram thought that was funny. They said it goes against the violence and the community standards, things like that. So she got in trouble for that. I don't know what she did, but they basically made, they, they, they delete the story. So I think she's funny. I think she's real. I like that she was talking about wanting to go and do something with um, uh, with anyone to get away from her kid. I think that's real. I think when you're a mom, it can be lonely. You can get stuck in like the baby thing. Maybe she needs to join a play group. I was in a play group when my oldest was like six weeks old. It was the best thing ever. And then I went on clearly to have four more kids and we had play groups for each of them. It just gets you surrounded by other moms. And like, misery loves company. I mean, I'm not saying it's miserable being a mom, but there's some aspects of it where you just feel so alone. You're in the fields, you know, you've been puked on, you've been pooped on, you're tired, you're exhausted. You don't feel super sexy. You may not be having date night as much as you wish. And you just want to be surrounded by other parents, moms or dads to kind of relate to and commiserate with. So I think it's hilarious. I think part of it is, is her shtick. You know, she's got the Bitch Bible podcast. She's super sarcastic, super over the top. So if you have never listened to Jackie Schimmel and today was your first uh, go at her, you know, you just got to realize that's how she is. Yeah, Ches Blanco says you just, you want friends to relate to. 
So I think it's hard whenever you have, like I was the first of all my friends to have a kid. So I remember the first Friendsgiving. So my oldest was born in October. She's almost 22. The first Friendsgiving, I used to host them all. Another friend, uh, Kim, decided to host for me. So I didn't have to whatever. And so everyone was making fun that um, she had a baby too, that me and her were a little bit late. And we're like, you have no idea. Like, it's not just two adults getting out the door now. Now it's a baby. And if they take a poop, oh, all over themselves minutes before you're wanting to go out, then you've got to give them a bath, change their clothes, figure out what they're wearing, pack another diaper, all the things, right? So it can be totally whatever. Oh, shout out Facebook is on. Oh, I love that a lot of people are coming on from Facebook now. Well, a lot. I say that it's one. Um, yes, AC says there's no manual for raising little humans. It takes a village. And I think sometimes, you know, I don't know. I think um, Jackie probably does have a lot of friends that have babies or have been through it. But when you're going through it, I think it can feel very isolating. So I think her way is like being sarcastic on social media, right? For sure. Um, what else? Monroe, did you hear what she said to him? I want to go back to Daddy Gage's house. Oh my God, that hurt my feelings for Jeff. Yet I don't even think it hurt his feelings. Even Doug, so let me tell you what happened if you didn't hear it. So they're talking about the um, the mural that Colette, you know, is doing and, you know, things that she wants to change about it and all this stuff, you know, the hair, the, you know, a, a shark in there, a dolphin, all these different things. And then, oh, they're talking about a butterfly. So Jeff tells, that's right. Jeff tells Jackie, I can't wait basically until Clyde is old enough basically to be an asshole to you. You know what I mean? Like till he can like back talk you. And he tells a story that I guess there was a butterfly that Monroe was looking forward to yesterday. And Jeff actually let it go because it was going to die if not. So Monroe comes home and says, where's the butterfly? And he's like, oh, I had to let it go. It lo looked like it was going to die. If it didn't, it was going to die. She gets mad and says, I was looking forward to releasing that butterfly all day. And then she says, I want to go back to Daddy Gage's house. Oh, my God, I would have died. Like, I'm sure this is common. We'll talk about this because even on the, uh, the Jeff Lewis after show, they talked about divorce because Monica Casey hosts a divorce podcast called Divorce Party with Tom Arnold and her parents were divorced. She went, her parent, her mom went through another divorce. Zach Noe Towers' parents are divorced. So they know a lot about this. Um, and it seemed very normal, but it seemed very hurtful to say that. Like I was just dying. Like, tell me if you've been through a divorce. Or if your parents were divorced, did y'all ever say that to them? It's probably normal, but she's six, y'all. She's not even seven years old. And she's saying, I want to go back to Daddy Gage's house. I was dying for him. He didn't seem upset by it, though, because then he says um, a few minutes later that how she'll turn on a dime, which is so true with kids. And she's like, Daddy, can we go get McDonald's? And was all sweet to him, you know, and he forgets it. But then Doug says, who doesn't have kids, Doug's like, did you make her apologize? I don't even think Jeff understood. To me, the reason she needed to apologize is saying, I want to go back to Daddy Gage's house, right? That's the part I would want to apologize to. And I would be like, you can't say things like that. And I would just really go in with the emotional part. Like this really hurts my feelings. I hope you don't really feel this way because this is just one small issue. And I would hope you not would not say, I want to go back to daddy Gage's house just because I released a butterfly before you got home from school. Right. Um, oh, Lori says on TikTok, we shouldn't know these things about her. I definitely agree with what you're saying. Cause as a mom, I definitely have kids that, you know, I respect what my kids want me to say about them and what they don't want me even on Facebook, I don't even mean, you know, reality water cooler. I mean, on Facebook with your friends and family that are the only ones looking at it. 
you know, for years, my kids have made sure what I post or what I say, or if I posted a picture, if they ver- if they approved it or not. But when you're on national worldwide, probably radio saying things that can live forever and strangers are judging you and also judging your dad. I, I sort of wonder if he's going to regret some of the things that he tells us. I mean, I have to think he will. I have to think she's going to be upset by some of the things he said, right? I don't know. I guess I've sort of, in some ways, I've gotten so used to reality TV. And I guess this is sort of reality radio that I'm just so used to hearing about these things. And I, as a listener, want to hear about it. As a mom, as a fan of Jeff's, I'm sometimes cringing because I I think you're right that we shouldn't know some of these things about her. And I think that's what they're probably going to court next week, October 10th, to deal with some of these things, right? What she, what he can say on air. Uh, we know that Gage is wanting more time with her, and he's also wanting more money from cust- from child support, right? Uh, super awkward. Um, yes, she's seven in less than 30 days, Beth Fed said. Her birthday is October 25th, which again, should we even know that? But we do. I mean, I don't know. I guess we know celebrities' birthdays. So she's definitely a celebrity. Okay. Are y'all ready to get into the Jeff Lewis after show? So today was Zach Noe Towers and Monica Casey. Tell me in comments. I'm pretty sure we're all going to agree. I think they had a much better, more lighthearted, more easygoing. It wasn't uncomfortable. But somebody said something yesterday, maybe in the Jeff Lewis Obsessed Facebook group. Um, Somebody said that Jamie needs to own some of the vibe because it kind of started off kind of sluggish. I guess he had just flown in from Las Vegas that morning. And you're right. He was definitely saying jokes that weren't landing. He was saying they weren't landing. So, you know, not everybody has a great day. Not every show knocks it out of the park, right? If we're at work, not everybody has a great day every single day. If you do presentations at work, sometimes we can go, "Mm -hmm, that wasn't that great. It could have been better, right? Um, If you're a teacher, we have our moments. We're like, ah, that wasn't best. We can, we could have done better. Yesterday, apparently, and I guess last week when Amanda McCants was on the after show with Zach Noe Towers, I guess in comments on the, on the coffee pictures and DMs to Jeff, probably DMs to her too, there was a lot of negativity. And she said that it got to her yesterday. So on today, they bring it up and Zach Noe Tower says, look, I'm hearing a lot about it. Yes, Sal says, as a teacher, you can confirm for sure. I mean, we all have our moments in life. We're not the best spouse, days where we're not the best parent, we're not the best friend, not the best daughter or son. We all have our moments, right? So um, that's how I felt yesterday's show was. So Zach Noe Tower says, I was hearing all this stuff. And he goes, I don't know if I was just zoned out, but I did not feel Amanda McCants was rude to me. He's like, I don't really know. I don't think I remember. I just remember it just not vibing. You know what I mean? Yesterday, I don't want to say I felt she was trying to be rude, but I do respect what Jamie said. He felt like she was, that Amanda was trying to put him down a little bit, make him look bad. So it would make herself feel a little bit better. And she even admits, you know, yes, I do have self-esteem. You know, I'm kind of going through some things. I'm also getting used to being on the radio. Jeff makes the excuse that she's young. I mean, I don't know. I, she is 26. I don't know how long she's been in this business. Somebody tagged me or sent it to me on DM. I don't remember which it was. A recent video of Amanda, which actually made me think a lot more of her. She's holding a mic. She's on a red carpet and she's like interviewing different reality stars. Uh, Oh, what's the show? The reality show that, um, that uh, Tom Sandoval was on recently. She's interviewing people from that. And it was actually really good. She was funny. She was uh, a good conversation. She was teasing about herself. She was like, you know, self-deprecating. It was really good. Like that made me probably think better of Amanda McCants. Like at least I saw her working and I didn't feel special forces. Yes. Thank you so much. Um, I didn't feel 
kind of like a lot of y'all did, I felt like maybe the Jeff Lewis after show isn't for her. Or especially, like I said, they really need to think about who they pair people with. And I do not feel that Jamie Kennedy and Amanda Bacantz were a good pairing. But Jeff defends her and says, look, yes, I got a lot of negativity. But I can tell you, when I agree with someone, when I think they've got talent, and he said specifically her and Paige Davis, shout out Paige Davis in your Christmas card. Um, he says, I'm not going to listen to the listeners and uh, take them off the air. He says, I am going to give her a week off next week just to kind of relax from all of this, but I will have her back. So let me know if you agree with that. Um, I don't know. As a mom, I definitely felt bad. Even last night as I was going to bed, I was like, I wonder how Amanda's feeling. I wonder if she reads all the comments or not, like, or if she just shuts off her DMs. I don't know. Or if she's reading the coffee picture comments. I didn't go back and read them. I often don't make enough time to go back and read those. But even Monica said people can be, or, or somebody said today, People can be really rude thinking that's the key to Jeff's heart. I've always said Jeff likes a little bit mean, but funny. So if you're just cruel and nasty, those aren't the DMs that he th he likes a little bit funny or he wants something to make fun of about it, right? Um, Patriot says 26 is a little bit young, but you have more maturity than 19. Yeah. So. Um, Melanie says, I've been a huge fan of Jamie Kennedy and I love him. Um, and I think part of it also was that he has been famous for so long. He is known for all of these TV shows that he's done and they were talking about it and he was getting those fan calls yesterday and nobody was really calling for Amanda about that. So I think that made her feel awkward. But, you know, you have to know when somebody is more famous than you and just kind of let them shine. You can't be in control of the phone calls into the after show, right? Um, yeah, he likes mean but funny, Raquel says. Yeah. Um, I don't know, Bobby. Bobby says, what's the talk about Channel 789? Is it not doing well? So today, and have you noticed, there's way more. Um, advertisements that Jeff is having to read on Jeff Lewis Live. I assume that's all specific to him and more money for him, right? But we haven't noticed the commercials really on 789. So I don't know if it's doing well. Uh, a lot of you clearly listened to it, the after show, because y'all had heard it. Remember, I was like 15 minutes delayed yesterday. And um a lot of y'all were DMing me and already posting in the Jeff Lewis Obsessed Facebook group that Amanda was crying. And I was like, wait, what? Like, I had just heard the whole awkward show. I didn't, at that point, I hadn't heard that she was crying and got upset with, with Jamie's answer to her. So apparently people are listening. It's just a matter of, is it making money? Like, is Jeff making money off of the show yet? I don't really know. The Lovely Air says the channel needs help. Tell Jeff your ideas. I think if you DM him, I think he really does read stuff and he really does. I mean, constructive criticism, right? Like fresh ideas, things that he can, you know, change. But yeah. Um, Golden Girl says Jeff supposedly makes three and a half million dollars a year. If true, he should be paid. He should be paid more than twenty five hundred a month. I think he's definitely paid more than $2,500 a month. But, you know, he gets money from Jeff Lewis Designs. He's getting money from Hollywood Houselift. He's getting money from Sirius XM. I think, does he still have a paint and a tile business? We know he gets money from, like, Chaz Dean's website. You know, when he has a code Jeff, he gets money from that, like a percentage. I mean, CBD, being a CBD, shit, he might make a ton of, a ton of money for that. FM says, let's be real. Jamie might be talented, but even his movies in the 200s weren't really mega hits. You never really hear people bring him up. He's lucky that he's friends with Jeff. Yeah, I mean, y'all know I'm really a big reality TV show person. Movies, it takes a lot for my husband to convince me to watch a two-hour movie. Now, documentary, I can definitely get into. If he finds a good documentary, I'm in. Or a comedy show. I love watching comedy comedians on like Netflix. Um, so I didn't know of Jamie Kennedy before Jeff Lewis Live. 
I just knew of him as the, the person that Jeff would make fun of for like not taking a shower and being kind of gross. Anyways, um, Monica talks about going to Las Vegas. If you live in the Houston area or any area, go to ZachNoeTowers.com. Look for his tickets. Look for his merch. Y'all, six of us are going to his show in Houston, October 26th at the Houston Improv. We got the, um, I forget what they call it, not VIP, but like this close up table for six people. After the taxes and fees and everything, it was only $31 a ticket, y'all. $31. That's amazing. So make sure if he comes to your town, if you like Zach Noe Towers, make sure to get a ticket and go and see him and yell out, well, I'm a chump. It's going to be so fun. And I cannot wait for sure. Tomorrow on the show is John Hill and Megan Weaver. And on the after show is Todd Lewis and Sexy Jeff. Chef Stu. I adore him so much. Uh, we are going to wrap it up. Oh my God. Victoria says I should go egg Gage's house. He lives in an apartment. I don't think I can, I don't think I can egg an apartment, but I wouldn't vandalize his home. Um, thank you for joining live. It is so much more fun. I love chatting with y'all. I love seeing your comments. If you're on the replay, please still like, please still comment. I still want to hear what you have to think. Make sure you're subscribing and follow me everywhere. Everything is under Jeff Lewis Obsessed. Have an amazing day and I will see you tomorrow on Thursday. I still need to watch OC Reunion Part 1 is tonight and I still need to watch Salt Lake City from last night. I hope it was good. Anyways, let me know. Bye, chump pads. Bye, TikTok. And bye, YouTube and Facebook and Twitter.